Masella here from Learn to Grow. I'm up here in the Pacific Northwest. I'm in Zone 8. Starting to get chilly here. Today I'll be doing an update of the garden, see what's growing in our fall garden. I'll also will be doing a little bit of harvesting. So right here is the southwest part of the garden. I don't really have anything growing here right now. I'm reserving this space for our garlic. Some hard neck, soft neck, and elephant garlic. So I'll be planting that in the next week or so. Here is the south part of the garden, but we're going to back up a little bit here onto our garden boxes over here in front of me. We've got some kale, as well as collard greens growing in this box. Check out this collard green here. It's doing really well. The leaves are huge lush and healthy there's a russian kale right there i think these are the curly kale i think there's a couple of colored greens in the bottom there so i need to thin this out in fact i'll be transplanting a couple of them and give it to my best friend as a gift what's great about growing collard greens and kale during winter time is the leaves turn sweeter during the cool winter months during the fall and winter months the plants increase their production of glucose so that way they can tolerate the cold weather so that turns the leaves sweeter um, in the winter time same thing same thing with brussels sprouts so i love growing these greens during winter and they're so healthy for you bunch of potato plants here i believe i planted some yukon gold maybe a couple red potatoes the the Yukon Gold's mature in about 90 days, so I've got another month left till I'm ready to harvest them. And I think, same thing with the Reds, I think they probably mature in about 100 days. So they'll be harvested around October. Okay, now we're back here again. Here are some herbs, or herbs, that are still growing. This is thyme here in the pot. Lemon balm does really well during the cool months. Rosemary, doing much better. I trimmed this back this summer. So it's a lot bushier and fuller. This one here, I believe is chocolate mint. So um, I had to trim this back as well. They take over the garden. Remember the mint family, including the lemon balm, um, they actually propagate very prolifically. And if you don't trim them back, they'll take over the garden. Oregano, same thing with oregano. They're very prolific as well. So it's uh, good to trim them back during uh, the growing months so you can contain them. More lemon balm, and lastly, another oregano bush. Now this pumpkin vine here, or vines, I think there's at least two or three vines in here, is the Atlantic Giant Pumpkin. Sadly, we've had a couple of pumpkins that were eaten by slugs or maybe squirrels that has been getting munched on. So I only have one or two, and it looks like um, something's gotten to it too. So this one, it's probably the size of a small cantaloupe. Over in this box, I've got some zucchini squash plants and a collard tree, I think. It's turned into a collard tree, collard greens tree. Um, we ha we've had this for going on almost two years this coming spring, and it's about three and a half feet tall. The leaves are smaller than the other collard green plant I have, although it's got a lot of branches. So it's branched out, it's really full, and it's full of leaves so yeah it's pretty wide too it's probably about three feet wide three and a half feet wide so hopefully um, it'll stick around I think it's gotten hardy enough that it'll survive the winter and we'll have it through next year again here are some zucchini plants there's a huge one that I've been waiting to harvest we'll be harvesting that today it looks pretty long in this garden box We've got some more kale. I transplanted this from the um, other garden boxes since they were overcrowding. So I've got some Russian kale here. And I think just the um, curly kale, curly leaf. I do still have some scarlet runner beans left. So a few flowers here. Here are some pods. You can eat the young pods when they're about three to five inches long. They're crispy and sweet. They are the sweetest bean pods that you'll ever taste although when they do get big and mature the pods get really tough um, and hard to eat so they'll be better for shelling beans or you can let them mature and collect the seeds here's a really long pod here I think it's at least 11 inches long so they do get that big I think the longest pod I've harvested was about 13 inches at least beautiful um, beans or seeds uh, some of them are purple black speckled seeds I love growing these every year. The hummingbirds love them. 
All right, I'm done harvesting here. I'm gonna show you what I got. She fell asleep during the tour. She was tired. That was her first nap today. So um, I'm glad she got some rest <laughs> or she is getting some rest right now. But here are some tomatoes, green tomatoes, Roma and cherry. If you can see this, a couple of zucchini, a few pods of scarlet runner beans. So um, we'll be ripening these green tomatoes indoors. And um, one more thing here. I harvested that giant zucchini. This must be the biggest zucchini I've ever grown. Um, last year I grew that one that was about five pounds and something ounces. This feels heavier. It's like a baseball bat. Check this out. So I'll be baking some zucchini bread or zucchini muffins. Um, the kids love those. Also, when you're growing zucchini, the more you harvest, the smaller ones, like these here, the more likely your plant will produce more zucchini. If you let them grow this big or let them mature, you'll be harvesting less zucchinis. All the energy will go towards the one zucchini. So want them to mature too long because the flesh gets really dry. So uh, I think I'm good here though. It's pretty heavy, so it's still full of moisture. So there's our fall garden harvest and update today. I hope that you guys are enjoying the fall season. Thank you so much for joining me today in the garden. Have a wonderful day and happy gardening.